Hey guys, this is Rick. It's early morning on uh, today's Thursday. <clears throat> we got a big blob of, 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 of weather over the island this morning. I'm supposed to get over to the other side uh, on my bicycle and it's just pouring down rain. Well, it's kind of just drizzling right now. But we got a day of it, it looks like. Listen, I wanted to chat with y'all. Um, I appreciate new people coming in. I think it's really nice. Um, you know, there's the... Uh, for those people that are new, that, that want to know what this is all about, you know, we're not really... We're not really... Uh, <clears throat> we're not really talking the Bible down. You know, like giving it any kind of disrespect in a way. But uh, through the years and the centuries of hammering of this idea of, of religion being very holy, everyone has this idea that, you know, we got to travel lightly around this. But, uh, you know, there, there's a way of just getting over that, you know, by just knowing that it's not holy. Uh, this religion, what we are talking about is religion actually takes you away from this God that we are talking about it takes man on another trip altogether mankind you know the individual is trapped and within himself he has to live with his shit all the time there's no flushing system and that's really what this winds up being it's just a simple little bitty self uh, maintained maintaining mechanism within our body that we can bring to life through a particular meditation procedure that literally cleans the hell out of you and um, and it also the the wonderful after effects of such a thing is that it like a light like this beacon that they tell us about it shines on the world around us and it takes a little bit of darkness out of not just you but the environment and so, you know, seeing and, and feeling this and now even believing, because we have found a, a, a code that, that, that helps to identify the writing as being authentic by the way that it was made up mechanically. Not, not just off the top of someone's head. This, this was like a mechanical writing, almost like it was, <clears throat> like it was planned, all right? You know, so, you know, a, a bunch of guys didn't have God speaking through them, but a, a, uh, fishermen and rock haulers, you know, and uh, shepherds. No, they didn't. Uh, even if you had three, four, or five different writers, you would not get them all writing the same code unless they were doing it on purpose. And, of course, our Bible tells us that it is done on purpose because it is what they call the letter. If you follow things by the letter, the letter kills. He says, you know, because the top of the story is kind of mean, kind of convoluted, and a little on the ornery side. And God calls that dark language. I speak in dark language, which means I have what I say is hidden. You have to find it. God is not the author of confusion. And what the whole top of that is about confusion. So you have to understand that the top of it is not God. Okay? What is inside it is God, just like you and me. Except we have to say that in reality, what is the outside, if we do not connect the two together, it just belongs to hell. You know, it's just, it's fun, you can do it, it's your choice. God-given choice. But if you had the choice, if you knew there was a choice, would you choose it? Would you really seriously? Yeah, 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 well, maybe so. I have, you know, and, and uh, but I've known myself through the years to always want to be better. I don't, I've always thought I was growing. I'm not the same guy I was a month ago, you know, and, um, and then, you know, without any change at all, you know, I always have said I've never been the same guy, even after meeting someone that's real important to me. I never have known them before, but maybe they said something, I heard something, or they reacted, or they touched me in some way that it changed me forever. But anyways, just want to take this. Uh, it took, it took oh, all day long of me checking in and finding that that that, that video had been stopped for whatever reason. <clears throat> Two and a half hours. As soon as I load it up, as soon as I, I I tell them, yeah, start uploading. 
the timer goes on, it's going from 57 minutes, you know, and then it's going um, to an hour, an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 45, two hours, two hours and 20 minutes. It's like, what? You know, and that happens, that happens more than enough. It really does. You know, I'll blame it on my computer, I might, but I'm telling you, I'm ha having a sick time trying to bring this shit up. But anyways, today I wanted to focus on something like, uh, we, we, we've been talking about Exodus and stuff, and I'm showing here that it's not real. That these stories and things, these all of these wonderful things are found in the Tao and other places that talk about God or these religious things that we take it as because of our dumbass minds or because of the way we want to follow. We want to be told what to do. Someone told us how to read this book. No one said you could read it any other way. I catch hell all the time. Oh, you changed the words. No, no. I read the words, you know, and it says, you know, do not take off the top. It says, read by the Spirit, because the Spirit saves. And so you'll find that everything on the top divides, hurts, and conquers. Whereas the one on the inside cleans house, sets you free, brings back, you know, love. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's all, it's all really nice, and it's a natural thing that happens to us. There's no real hocus-pocus or anything like that. Alright, so anyways, I wanted to talk about this idea of the feasts. Whenever the Jewish people have a certain feast day, like let's say like Passover, you know, that, that this is the day that they want to remember something because God told them to. And the reason why they have the Eucharist and Holy Communion is because Jesus told them to keep the feast. Jesus, God tells them, Moses tells them to remember to keep the feast. So the Last Supper, the Last Supper, you guys, is the feast so you'll see that that's all channel that's a what one two three four five six six is the bar that's when they gather everyone up seven is the you know uh, you know the shit happens right this is what where, where locusts are let out to chew on everything this is the, this is the feast this is the feast but actually let's, let's let's just push it to number eight the new you the completion. And most all these stories, they're all running around drunk, naked, and f eating up a storm. That's the feast, because that's the new you. So let us keep the feast, is what they're saying. Let's remember this, because this, this, it, remember to come here, not once a year. How about, how about once a week, once every two weeks, once a month? go up, you know, and, and and return home. Just that's that that's what it means to remember the feast. Alright. And to eat this feast, to talk about, to bring it into this is my flesh. This is my flesh. Right? This represents my flesh. This represents my blood. Alright, so we know that the flesh of God and the blood of Jesus or these guys, what they're doing is they're they're saying that, they, that the preachers can bring bring life into this, into these things. That you are actually going to be drinking the spirit. Let me tell you. Mm -mm. I've already done that. I can't even think about it. <sighs> That's drinking poison. Okay? Because you don't need to bring anything in you. It's already there. Oh my God. You know? It's just freaking me out because I used to sit there and do that. I was a cup bearer. Oh my God! Well, it did all kinds of stuff. You did whatever you want, you, whatever you could do. You did whatever. <coughs> you did whatever was necessary in church to get it to get the show on, because the show must go on always. So that's what it means to keep the feast, and it it's not Jesus, you know. Moses said it too. All these people are saying keep the feast, because you know, hey, don't forget, don't forget, to come on. We got a big banquet planned for you once you finally make it up there. You know, the prodigal son and stuff like that. I woke up with something else on my brain. I wanted to tell you the, the worshiping one God. Okay, because this is the other part. They say, you know, one of the reasons why Jewish people don't necessarily believe in the in the, the Trinity so much is because it's hard to wrap their mind around uh, one God or one God that represents a three energies and so the best way to go about this 
is to understand that in order to worship one God is to be whole. You yourself. One the lessons is is for you to be one, to be one with God. All right, that doesn't mean that I'm just going to spend all my attention. I have been. I've been for two months now, or three months or more. Oh my God! You know, and who knows how many more months and how many more hours and time and whatever my town is going to go into serving this this energy. And um, and in this case, it's it's like you know, there's this beautiful energy that would be considered God, but it's a it's the Elohim, it's a male and a female, it's actually in a way that, you know, you, you don't really fit into that part because matter, matter and this beautiful energy, they coexist together in you. So this beautiful energy is outside of you and it manifests inside of you and this is where this energy dwells. So there's one of them. Jesus said he's inside of you. And he says, when you ever freaking come inside, you'll find that I'm with the Father, and, and you're with me, and I'm with you. So, you'll see that the Holy Spirit's the female side, the, so the mother of us all, she's there, you know, the Father, and that this is actually their creation. This brain was born in April, April 12th, 1963. That's where this guy was born, right here. This is where, how I was born, and I set out to grow, and I had all these people teaching me from the outside, and then until I was about 12 or 13 or something, maybe even old, old longer, because I was a kid for so long. I'm a late bloomer. I never matured until I was almost 20. That's a long time to go as a kid. But your, their, their brain is in Delta for that time until you start turning into an adult, and then you're into beta. And then it takes some energy you have to try to get up there to get into delta that's just important but when you're just this big wide-eyed little kid you know with your mouth wide open you're just like this big dish antenna trying to take everything in so they tell us that we're gods we're children of light it's all about us it's always been about us and this bible teaches us how to bring our low mind into a higher mind for health reasons, for 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 external reasons, and for a peace of mind, and of course they say, if you want to have peace, peace the mind is actually the, is symbolized as it's just so beautiful. The lower mind symbolizes Earth. It's our playground. It's given to us to 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 learn and play and have a good old time on, and everything is welcome. Everything. What they consider a sin in these books is delving and laying in the emotions. And of course, when we give up mother and father and cleave to husband and wife, it's the, our emotions that are dragging us down. So if we drag and we live in the emotions, that's the sin. So every now and then get up and clean the hell out of you. All right? And then it brings you right back down again so you can get some more. So, you know do our best, let's do our best, we need more people to understand that three trinity thing also as being <clears throat> if you can learn to read this book this is what they tell you so important, you know they always say just read the Bible, read the Bible now read the Bible with this code and understand it, just throw something out in the air say I'm going to look for number five and just open the book and say I'm going to look for the number six and you know what number six is and you just find any six or twelve you know, anything that's going to reduce or come down to back to the number six you or, or add to uh, to create these numbers, you'll, you'll be able to guess, oh, I think it's going to be about worlds. I'm pretty sure that that, you know, and then, you know, in the whole chapter, if the whole chapter is number three, be sure that number three is going to be about the combination of hit God and his person and his makings coming together. Something beautiful. That's the three. So that's how you do it. You learn how to how to read it, how to see it where you saw it. You know how you're reading it. You're looking. You know the other part is to hear it when you're hearing it. You know, let's keep the feast. You know, you guys, let's keep the feast. You know, I know what that means now. You know, what God has joined together, let no man take apart. Don't let mankind separate these two that's the marriage 
right here. This is the marriage. Once you learn it. Alright? And we don't go and take we do <laughs> the neighbor's wife. Alright? Neighbors. Neighbors. They spell it like that all the way through the through the Bible too. Neighbors. We don't go to neighbor's wife. You know, that's really, really neat. That means, you know, we're not oh that means don't <coughs> Don't go to religion. Your neighbor is, the, is your lower mind. If you go to lower mind, you're seeking her wife. Her wife, what they mean by womankind in the Bible, by womankind is the spiritual side, just spiritual. That's womankind. Mankind is not spiritual. Mankind is his, you know, he's like the kingdom. And, but, you know, as long as they've kicked the woman out and they have kicked her out for 2,000 years, I'm showing you where she is and put her back where she's supposed to go. Mother and father and the child. One. There you are. You got it. Good morning. I love you guys. And this is the truth. This is God's honest truth. Sure is. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, like I said, practice this stuff because the Bible says this itself. And I've made it on God video that if you could get those three things together and understand using your heart, something beautiful is bound to happen. And that's where the watch comes in. Because you never know what goes on. It's the thief that comes in. It's the thieves. It's the robbers that are in the house. Well, they're gone now. And they took something with them. They had the feast. They kept the feast. <clears throat> and what happens is, I've got this cough that wants to just come out of me. I'm holding it back. Yeah, so the idea is, uh, I don't even know where I am right now. I was on my way out. Guys, best to you, and uh, there's more coming. There's plenty more. There's plenty more. It's just interesting how I once said, all I'm going to do is repeat myself. And uh, even though I can come up with a different story, you can understand that the repeating part was the plan. That's the, lo that's the law. That's the code. And... Um, <clears throat> uh, Get there as soon as you can. Practice, practice, practice. Love you guys.